morning. This is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today I'm here with Master Farrier Kenny Lyon, who does all of our horses, and you've seen on some of our other videos. And we're going to do a little update on Bailador. If you all remember, Bailador came in, um, his feet were in very bad shape, and it's been about six months' time now, and we're going to ask Kenny what's improved and, uh, and where, where, where do we have to go from there. Okay, a little bit about uh, Bailador here is uh, what I saw when I first came in was that uh, his breakover had been shifted back, obviously, uh, and that his heels were actually running forward. Um, some of the things that, uh, that we now have improved, and obviously he needs to be trimmed today and everything, but some of the things that, that I see improved from the last time that we did him is now the, the dorsal aspect of his hoof wall and the caudal aspect of his hoof wall, which should ideally correlate with each other, are now pretty close to the same angle. Uh, this is one of those kind of things where should we shift the break over back and, and leave the heels where they were in an effort to try to, to rebalance this horse, we typically lose those. Uh, we can talk a little bit about shifting, uh, shifting weight forward and backwards in the foot whenever you do uh, break over or adjust the break over and everything. But basically what I'd like to do is we're going to go ahead and pull his shoe off. We'll give a couple of reference points on the outside of this foot so that you can see where things have improved and then some of the things that we need to go ahead and continue to address. So uh, if you'll bear with me for a minute, we'll get that shoe off. All right. Okay, a couple of the issues that, uh, that I saw when we first had Bilador come in was separation around the outside of his foot now this is uh he still has just a little bit remaining here and we need to continue to work on that after we trim him today chances are most of that's going to be gone but what we also had was a lack of integrity in his heels and a lack of hoof wall in the front of his foot which led to the outsides of his foot uh wanting to bulge out and, and flare so we now have have ended up with a foot that's got a lot of integrity in the hoof wall and is pretty much back to the center of this bone. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the bone. I've, I've got one that I can show you that, that shows that there's a, there's a certain balance point to this foot and ideally what we want is good strong hoof wall all the way around with that bone or the center of that, that weight bearing to be right in the center of this foot. If we shift this back too far or this too far forward, then that weight bearing that should be in the center of this foot then shifts forwards and backwards. And uh, by moving it backwards like that, by, by knocking off our toe and setting our shoe way back, we end up taking the pressure off of the front of the foot and shifting it further back, which then causes the back half of this foot to be overloaded. Well, that's what we want to talk a little bit more about today, and we've had a lot of questions about always what I had been taught to look for as a bad shoe job, where the shoe had been ground off to fit the shoe, and the toe, the shoe was way back under the foot. M myself growing up, that's what we always learned was a bad shoe job. And now I'm seeing that it, almost everywhere I go, I'm seeing horses shod like this, and the answer the shoers are giving people is, oh, this is improving the horse's breakover. And uh, I know I went through a real learning curve about what that really meant and what it really meant to the horse and its movement. Would you mind expanding on that just a little bit? Certainly. I guess probably the best way to do this is to first talk about what breakover really is. Uh, it's a buzzword and the thing about farrier and the thing about horse ownership is that we go through a series of, of fads on a regular basis and, and buzzwords are all included in these fads. The latest buzzword is breakover. And so I guess we probably have to put some kind of a definition to it. And if you ask a lot of different people, you're going to get a whole lot of different answers. I like to think of breakover as a period of time. That's actually the easiest way for me to understand this. And I would say that that is a period of time from when the horse's heels leave the ground to when the horse's toe leaves the ground. So. In Bilador here, his breakover phase would start as soon as his heels came up off the ground. And then they would end, that breakover phase would end when his toe left the ground. By shifting the breakover point back or enhancing breakover, I look at that as shifting that period of time to a shorter period of time from when his heels leave the ground to when his toe leaves the ground. Now this is fine for 
and is very realistic if your horse doesn't have the uh, the the proportions of foot necessary to whip, to bear weight in the center of it. If you have to shift weight bearing back uh, or shift it forward in a foot because of poor hoof growth or a malady of some type, then that may very well be legitimate. There's a lot of different ways to uh, to shift the breakover point or to just to shorten that period of time from heels up to toes up. Uh, in his case, the idea though is to put the foot back where it belongs. Mother Nature had a really good design going when she started these guys. And then you no longer have to shift that period of time. Unfortunately, there's a few things that go along whenever we manipulate the foot. Uh, there's, you never gain something for nothing. So unfortunately, what typically ends up happening is when we shift the breakover point back, you shift the gate. And typically that gate means that uh, by changing that gate, by shifting that breakover point back, you typically, you shorten that period of time, it raises the leg quicker, shifts over the axis of the leg far sooner, and then typically it shortens the stride up. And as soon as you shorten the stride up, then the whole horse's body changes. Exactly. And what we discovered, we work our horses through the back. And what we discovered is that this mysterious breakover shoeing, where the shoe is set back, was making the horse, as you said, it shortens the stride and makes them want to lift the knee. Now, if both ends, and I think it's become prevalent because so many horses today are being ridden hollow, I think the hollow back horses trip less because that's usually why people say, well, why did you do this? And I ask them, oh, well, the horse was tripping, so the shoer did this. So what that tells me is, you know, they've tried to solve the problem of the horse's tripping by getting him to lift his feet out of the sand higher so he doesn't fall over his toes. But what we discovered, trying to work our horses through from the back, it, it literally felt like the wheels were falling off in front because when we would try to get the horses to come through, through behind, the front leg didn't, that change in the balance seemed to change the way the horse swung from the shoulder because it changed the balance of the foot. So no longer could the horse swing with the hind leg and all of a sudden he's trying to go up and down in front and through behind. So happily, thanks to Mr. Lyons here, we were able to, uh, to straighten all of our horses out and they all look wonderful now. Um, that being my experience, anything else you'd like to say about that? Well, as I said before, probably the my primary focus is a good, strong, healthy foot. As I said before, my belief is Mother Nature had a really great design going with this, and the less I have to do to manipulate that, the better I like it. Uh, my first concern is typically a good, healthy hoof, and I found that by manipulating that break over and, and shifting things around that I ideally ended up disrupting that, that good, solid, healthy foot. So I have found that, like I said, if I maintain uh, an eye on the anatomy of the inside of this foot and where weight bearing should be that the stay apparatus and, and the whole function of this horse's legs tends to work the way it's supposed to and we don't have the little problems that we should that we've been experiencing by manipulating that. Now that being said and in defense of a lot of the different techniques that we use Oftentimes, if I can't achieve in a trim what needs to be achieved, then I will have to manipulate that somehow through a shoe. But it's not a full-time permanent thing. We're Ideally, it's, it's to just reach that point where we're back to ground zero. Again. Always working back to a correctly foreign foot that's neither, kind of like I say about saddles. I don't want a saddle that pushes me back. I don't want a saddle that pushes me forward. I want a saddle that allows me to be balanced in the middle, just like we want the foot to be balanced without changing it. So to encapsulate, would you probably say then, most of the time, if you're trying to ride your horses correctly, as we do, and work them through the back and get them to come through with their hindquarters, uh, the only time that you would do this breakover then would be if you had a horse that actually was sore in front or something that you needed to change. That you needed to change that so it wasn't putting the pressure on that. And I would say as a trainer, well, if that's true, then you probably should alter how you shouldn't expect as much from your horse. So if you have a horse, while, as I have gone through with many of these horses, this one included, you know, I have, you know, he is a giant mover, but I only am now beginning to let him have his full stride because I just felt like he was so out of balance that he couldn't ride him that way. So I think you could probably say that, you know, if, uh, if that's what your farrier is doing, you probably should not be trying to work the horse at its maximum length of stride until you get the horse's foot balanced the way it should be. I, I would agree with that. And again, like I said, with an eye on the anatomy for the ins of the inside of this hoof capsule, I think once we've achieved that, then 
you guys can go to town on doing what you do and we can maintain that. Uh, I would say communication with your farrier over where we're going with this and what you're trying to achieve and what he's trying to achieve and an open line of communication is mandatory for this horse to reach its entire potential. Exactly. Well, thank you very much, Kenny. There's one other point I would touch on that we did find also with many of the people that were shooing in this mysterious breakover fashion of dumping off the toes, they almost all were using pre-made shoes with side clips on both sides. And what we discovered, the horses that we, that the man did this with, all of a sudden their feet became very boxy, they were no longer spreading, the heels were getting contracted. So could you say a little bit about that, side clips on the front feet? I would say that all, all shoes with clips on them have a purpose. And to understand what the purposes are, you probably need to understand what the use of a clip is. Uh, clips are, are actually utilized to take the shearing effect off of nails to keep shoes from sliding one direction or another. The facility of side clips on a shoe allows a shoe to be set back. And that's where this, this kind of vicious cycle of side clips setting the shoe back, dumping the toe has all come from was that was facilitated by those clips. Now unfortunately what happens though is when you shift those things back and you to to rectify this breakover or whatever it may be that you were working on, at the same time those clips tend to keep your foot very tight on the sides because it does not allow the foot to expand as well. And so because you do have those side clips and you have shortened the foot this direction and now narrowed the foot this direction, you end up with a very, very boxy, very upright foot that has no integrity and does not function the way it's supposed to. Again, they all have a purpose and side clips have a purpose the same as, so, as toe clips or quarter clips, but it's a, you have to understand that for everything you gain, you give up something. So you have to keep an eye on the end of this and if need be, shift as necessary to maybe a different type of clip or a different type of shoe. Great. Kenny Lyon, Master Farrier, thank you all so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time at Art to Ride.